let's consider the Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equations, or RANDs as it's usually referred to. The Navier-Stokes equations are the name given to the differential form of the conservation of momentum. And so we're looking, we will be looking at the Reynolds averaged version of those equations, which is what we'll be solving using ANSYS Fluent. The Navier-Stokes equations uh, for x direction momentum conservation look like that. Um, this the, this term is familiar, this term is familiar, this term is familiar. For instance, that term represents the net pressure force on our you know infinitesimal fluid particle moving through the flow, and this is written, you know, it's force per unit volume and so on. We have we haven't really seen this term here before. That comes due to unsteadiness in the flow. The flow is not really steady here because you have these uh, fluctuations so you have to extend the Navier Stokes to the unsteady case and you get this extra term here which is you know which involves derivative of the velocity with respect to time and then you um, use the Reynolds decomposition okay so you decompose the velocity into the Reynolds average and the fluctuation and you substitute this in here and you do an averaging and you will get that equation. And this is called, you know, this would be the X component of the Reynolds averaged Navier-Stokes. So this would be X component. This term is analogous to that term. This term here, which is the acceleration due to movement of the fluid particle, the so-called convection term, um, convective acceleration is analogous to that. The pressure gradient term is analogous to that. The net viscous uh, force on average is analogous to that. But then we get this extra term here that involves the product of two fluctuations. You, you know, for instance, you have the fluctuation, the u-velocity, and the derivative of that. And this is not zero, you know, you have products of two fluctuation, fluctuating quantities, and then you average that. And this term actually comes from that term here because it's, it's nonlinear, so that's why the fluctuating terms from the um, don't drop out on averaging. I've just brought it to the right-hand side. And it's, um, this is the extra term that one gets when one does a Reynolds average. So this extra term is contained in the Reynolds average Navier-Stokes equations. And I can write this term a little bit differently if I use continuity, and I've shown it over here. So, you know, I've written this term like that. Essentially, what I've done is I've used continuity and taken the derivatives out of the averaging. The averaging is, is an integral, so you can take the derivative out of the integral and you will get that term and you can convince yourself that you know using chain rule if you differentiate um, these terms and use continuity you will get that and here there is a big leap a conceptual leap you say you know what that term actually represents um, a turbulent shear stress so I would say that's like a a shear stress from the you know from the fluctuations or the turbulence analogous to the shear that one gets in in the viscous case that's a big conceptual leap we will accept it for now um, and this is the kind of thing you know you have to work with it a lot to get comfortable with it and I'm I'm not an expert in turbulence and I, I'm I'm still kind of trying to get comfortable with it so if I look at an infinitesimal fluid particle, okay, on average, the fluctuations are creating an additional stress that's tau xy turbulent, and you know that's uh, given by by that. So that's the you know the average effect of the turbulence. Um, similarly, you get a shear over here that's going to be slightly different so you would say tau xy turbulent 
plus d tau xy by dy because that's the y direction times dy times delta y and the net turbulent um, shear is going to be proportional to that term as we've seen you know because you get cancellation of that and that and so on this means that the, that's the net turbulent shear stress on the the fluid particle similarly this is the net uh, turbulent normal stress you know you have to also consider the turbulent stresses in the in the x direction and I can write this um, this term then these two terms as a net you know as an a viscous force in the x direction uh, due to the turbulent stresses so this is force due to turbulent stresses And it's in the x direction over here. These turbulent stresses are also referred to as the as the Reynolds stresses. And this is analogous to that term, which is the net viscous force in the x direction. Um, and this is per unit volume, so this also has to be per unit volume. This is a pesky term because it involves fluctuations you know products of fluctuations which we are not resolving so we have to write this in terms of the 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 Reynolds average quantities and that's where you have to bring in you know a, a model and there is some inspired guesswork that comes in um, and we'll be using you know a turbulence model when we are doing the the CFD simulation and ANSYS fluent so let's take a look at how that those Reynolds uh, stresses are modeled <laughs> 